in that full interview with the head of UN Women, where we broadcast this Sunday on the full view at 8 p.m., just ahead of International Women's Day on Monday, March 8. Now, the Judicial Conduct Committee has filed in favor of a complaint by Africa for Palestine and Women's Cultural Group against Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng and ordered to apologize for his comments made at a prayer meeting. For more on this, so we speak to Mohammed Desai, director of Hashtag Africa for Palestine. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So what was it that he said that uh, cul uh, culminated in this complaint? Hi, thanks so much for hosting us. Um, the contention raised late last uh, June of last year when the Chief Justice participated in a pro-Israeli event in which he, um, in which he lent his support to the Israeli regime. Uh, this is when uh, Africa for Palestine had laid its complaint with the Judicial Services Commission. Okay, so just let's look at what the committee found against him. Take us through that. What were the findings, or what does that mean? So the JSC um, ha had appointed uh, Deputy Judge President uh, Phineas Mojapelo to look into the matter. Um, uh, Judge Mojapelo and the JSC found the Chief Justice to be in contravention of the uh, JSC's uh, Judicial Code of Conduct, uh, whereby the uh, Chief Justice had entered political controversy. Uh, this mm. is something that is clearly stipulated in the GSC's Code of Conduct uh, as, being, uh, uh, as being something that judges are not supposed to be entering the foray of. Mm. And to your mind, just especially for hashtag Africa for Palestine, what is the biggest part of the victory? I hear you talk about the conduct of members of the judiciary, but just for the campaign itself, what is uh, the significance, the importance of this victory? I think that there are two things. Firstly, it's a good day for the Palestinian cause in South Africa. It's also a good day for the, for the, uh, for, for the South African government's position on the Palestinian issue, which now uh, has the, GSC, the GSC has clearly said the Chief Justice was undermining by participating in this uh, pro-Israeli uh, event. I think that it's also a good day for uh, South Africa and for our judiciary in that it has set a precedent. It has set the standards for judicial uh, conduct. The 67-page decision that was delivered by the JSC uh, today uh, makes it very clear that the Chief Justice has 10 days in order to not only apologize, but also to retract his uh, comments, and that this apology, uh, this retraction must take place firstly at a meeting of all the judges of the Constitutional Court, and thereafter must be released via, via the Constitutional Court media release uh, system. And so we think that it's not only a good day for the Palestinian cause, but also a good day for South Africa and our judiciary. Mm. And I want you then to clarify for us your organization's beliefs on the issue of freedom of speech, because uh, you have just mentioned that it was a, a political statement. Originally, you had said that you are insulted by it. You found it high-handed because it was um, anti- or unchristian-like. So what is the significance then of this going forward and how people take into account the expressions on what could be political matters? I'm glad that you're raising this point. I think that uh, what needs to be clarified is that the South African Constitution uh, allows a freedom of expression, a very wide form of freedom of expression. However, the judges of our country sign the uh, JSC's uh, code of conduct, which they then, which they are then uh, bound by. Now, this code of conduct doesn't allow judges to enter into political uh, activities for as long as they are judges. So it's a bit like a doctor has a freedom of expression and speech to speak about anything, but they sign a certain medical code of conduct which doesn't allow them to divulge the information of their patients. So this is a very specific instance of freedom of expression, and it's not a general take on uh, freedom of speech in our country. Secondly, is that the Chief Justice conflated and confused the biblical land of Israel with the modern state of Israel created in 1948. And in the process, he did a very dear disservice to the indigenous Palestinian Christians, the, some of the first followers of Jesus Christ. 
And importantly, in today's GSC's uh, decision, the uh, Judge uh, President Mojapelo makes mention that the South African Council of Churches, at the same time that the Chief Justice had made his pro-Israeli comments, had also issued a statement in support of the Palestinian Christian community and, and criticizing the, Isra the Israeli uh, regime. And so we do hope that the Chief Justice will not only retract and apologize for this, but will also, uh, will, will also take heed at the fact that there was an insult to the Palestinian Christian population and to many other Christians in South Africa, for example, led by the South African Council of Churches. Mm. Now, at the time, I believe he had said something about freedom of religions and freedom, freedom of expressions being weaponized against him uh, in the name of human rights, making an example of him. And I want to use the term Zion, Zionism, Zionists, etc., uh, to say that in some cases it does have an Emot not only does it have an emotive meaning, it does have uh, different interpretations from a religious perspective or even political perspective. So uh, how, how should we be approaching these matters and, and the weight that they carry, the words that we say? I think that, uh, the first, for that firstly, as Africa for Palestine and as an organization that participates with other civil society groupings, we welcome the kind of direction that our government has taken on the Israeli-Palestinian issue. South Africa, after being called on by the peoples of our country, has downgraded its relationship with the Israeli uh, regime. Uh, we don't have an embassy, any, we don't have an ambassador posted to Israel uh, anymore. And I think that, uh, secondly, there is a very vibrant conversation taking place within not only South African civil society, but also within our larger, greater uh, public. And this is because we come from a history which international solidarity played a key role in our own liberation. And thus, likewise, today, you have various activities and campaigns in support of the people of Cuba, the people of Western Sahara, and the people of uh, Palestine. And these discussions should flourish within civil society. However, chief, the chief justice and judges should not abuse their position to okay. try to portray our government and our people's position. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Mohammed Desai, Director, Hashtag Africa for Palestine.